It is good to be in God's house. I am uh, grateful for, for just how he works. I'm grateful for how he blesses our church. Uh, when, when he first came in here, I was thinking nobody, maybe nobody's going to show up. I told Jess earlier this week, and I've shared it, I've shared it with you, as Satan does not want this message preached. Um, I was excited when, as I began to prepare it. Uh, the more I began to prepare it, the, 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 the more uh, scared I became. And when I say scared, not scared in the sense that I, that, you know, I want to die or, or uh, but listen, anytime we do something, we kind of reveal what Satan is doing. Satan does not like it. And we need to understand he is at work. I don't think we think about it much. We think of, we think of our lives as, as uh, well, we, my eyes are flesh. I see, I feel things, I hear things. I, it's a, it's a, it's a worldly, fleshly world around us. And what I mean, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the, the flesh is in sin. I'm talking about flesh. I, I see things because things are there. But we need to understand there is not just a physical world that we see, but there is a spiritual world in which we battle. And uh, we do not, I think many times, we just don't pay attention to that. And uh, this morning, uh, our text is Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, verse 27. We're going to read it. We're going to pray. And uh, we're going to pray that God gives us exactly what we need to hear this morning. Mark chapter 3, verse 27. It says, No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man. And then he will spoil his house. Let's pray, Father God. I Lord, as we uh, uh, begin to study your word here this morning, God, I pray that there would be nothing of me in this message, but God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would have free reign to work in our hearts. Help us to understand the truths of these things, Lord, and, and open up our eyes to, uh, Lord, I mean, maybe something that we've been blind to a little bit or, 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 or neglected to think about or pray about. God, I pray that you would bind Satan this morning. Uh, Lord, I, I, I pray that you would bind his influence, Lord, that there would be no distractions. There would be nothing that would uh, hinder your word from being preached. Uh, God, I, I, I pray that you would help us to, to give our full attention to your word and, and to your spirit as you work. Lord, not as I preach, Lord, not, as, uh, not me, not, not my words, but Lord, what your word is telling us here this morning. Uh, Lord, you know that I have no, no ability or no, no power of my own. Lord, I have, I have nothing uh, really to offer other than uh, the word that you've given to us. So, God, I pray that you would speak through it and use it, Lord, to empower us, to strengthen us, to make us aware of the battle that's going on. We thank you, Lord. We ask for your help, Lord, we need it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here in this verse, Matthew chapter 27, he says, No man can enter into a, a, a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Uh, uh, we need to understand the context of this verse to understand who the strong man is. Uh, the, the context of this verse, Jesus is, has been performing miracles. Jesus has been uh, doing some great and mighty things. Uh, uh, listen, when he came on this earth, uh, we know that he came to seek and to save. That was lost. His entire purpose for coming to this earth was, to, was to, uh, to, to, to die for our sins. When he died on the cross and rose again, uh, his work was finished. That's why he said it is finished. Amen. Uh, he, he went up to heaven. Uh, he, he makes uh, intercession for us daily. Uh, but while he was here, he performed many miracles. Uh, he healed the sick. Uh, there, were, uh, there were those that were, had been lame from birth that, uh, because uh, he told them to get up and walk, or take up their bed and walk. They got up and they took up their bed and walked. There were those that were born without the, the ability to see. And he, he touched their eyes and they were able to see. There were those that were, uh, that were unable to speak. There were those that, they, that, that were had a devil within them, a, a demon within them, and, and you can say, well, wait, I don't believe in that, and the Bible tells us all about it, uh, that they were oppressed of the devil, uh, some had many devils within them, and, and he, would, uh, he would command them to come out, these men who would, or these the children, these men who would throw themselves in the fire, not because they enjoyed throwing themselves in the fire, but because something made them do that. Uh, there, there is a power uh, that was there, but Jesus, was, while he was here, uh, did many things. In fact, just before this, he had taken a, 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 a man who... Uh, 
a young man who uh, had a devil within him, and he cast that demon out. He told that demon to, to leave that body. That demon left that, that, that person. And, and, and some people praise God for what he did, but the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they didn't praise God for this. In fact, they accused him of something else. They said, it's only by Beelzebub. It's only because there's a demon within him that he has power over these other demons. So they couldn't explain it in, in, in denying his deity, in denying who, they, who he was. They could not explain how he had power over the, the, these, the, these illnesses, these sicknesses, and these demons. Now, we can explain it because we know that he was God. Amen? He, he had power to do this because he was Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in the flesh. And, and, but, but here they're saying, no, it's not because of that. And, and, and Jesus begins to teach them through parables. Anytime he used a parable, it was to, to kind of explain something to, to, to some, right? And he said, he said listen, uh, uh, Satan doesn't cast out Satan. Satan can't go out up against Satan because if he did, he would fall. And Satan's, Satan's desire isn't to make himself fall. Satan's desire is that the throne of God would fall. Because he had said that I will be like the Most High. That was his sin. His sin was pride. His sin was, uh, was placing himself above God. And, and, and so, so, he, so he's trying to teach them, listen, uh, Satan can't come against himself. He doesn't cast out these demons by this, uh, by, by himself. Uh, something has to overcome him. Verse uh, uh, says, uh, 24 says, And a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. We see that even now. We can see the wisdom in that, whether it's Satan or whether it's the church. Listen, if the church comes upon itself and we begin to fight and disagree and, and there, there's strife within this church, what will happen to this church? It will fall apart. If a nation comes against nation, listen, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, our nation had divided uh, in the, during the Civil War, the, the North versus the South, the rebels versus the, uh, ver listen, there was, a, there was an issue. And what, was, what did Abraham Lincoln say? He took the wisdom from the Bible and he said a nation that fighteth against itself cannot stand. He understood that we need to come together as one nation. The context of this verse is talking about the strong man, the strong man is not Jesus. He's the stronger man. And we'll get to that in a few, moment, in a few minutes. But the strong man here is Satan himself. The strong man here in this verse, verse 27, uh, is Satan himself. It says, no man can enter into a strong man's house. Well, Jesus, what he's talking about, Jesus said, I have entered into his house and I bound the strong man and I'm doing what I want. He's casting out the devils. He's doing those things. But I want us to see that this morning that the strong man is Satan himself. The identity of the strong man is Satan. Listen, we, there's this misconception in the world today that the Satan, and, and even in, in churches, uh, Satan is a weakling. That Satan is this uh, little skinny dude in a, in a red suit with a pointy tail and a pitchfork. And, uh, uh, and think, oh, you know, there's, there's not much there. The Bible talks about it. Listen, you need to understand something. We are in a war. We are in a spiritual war. And, and this is not a, my normal Sunday message. My normal Sunday message is, is, is about the victory over sin, the victory over, over, over death uh, through Jesus Christ. And, and listen, there's victory here too. But we need to understand as Christians that, that we are in a spiritual warfare. We see, uh, we see the President of the United States. We see the, the, this physical world. And, and we, we see uh, the nations, and, uh, nations against nations and, and the principalities and the rulers of this world. And, and listen, we stand in awe of some of them. Now, you may not like the President Trump. You may not like uh, uh, the President Clinton uh, that we had before or Bush or any of those, but they were still the President and, and we revered those and they had some power, didn't they? Don't they? Uh, uh, world leaders across this country have power to do, great, uh, to do some terrible things or some good things and, and, and we, 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 there, there's a, a reverential, and when I say reverential I don't mean we revere them like God, but there's a little bit of fear there, knowing the power that they hold. But looking at, at this fleshly world, this earthly world that we live in, many times we forget that this is not the only world that there is. The Bible tells us and teaches us, and we're going to look at some verses here, that there is a, a spiritual world out there. Look with me, if you would, at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to look at verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Here, uh, Paul is tell, teaching the Ephesian, ch the, the, the church there in Ephesus, that, that he says, listen, we, we battle not against flesh and blood. We see flesh and blood. We live in a flesh and blood world. But listen, as, as born-again believers, our battle isn't here against flesh and blood. Listen, uh, I, told, I told my wife this week, that, and I already mentioned it, listen, there's going to be trouble this week. I know it just preparing, in preparing this message that Satan doesn't want to preach. Why? Because we're revealing the power of the darkness that we fight, and we walk around blind to it every single day. Listen, if we saw the, the spiritual world around us, we would be terrified. If we truly understood it and saw it, we would be terrified because there are principalities, there are powers. This, this place, listen, God is sovereign and God is ruler of all. God gave this, uh, this, this uh, Jesus all of this. Uh, he, it belongs to him, but he hasn't taken authority over it yet. Do you know who the authority of this world is? It's Satan himself. He, uh, he says he's the prince of the power of the air. We're going to look at the book of Daniel in chapter 10. And, and, and the, angel, uh, the angel reveals to Daniel that, that the, the, the princes of Persia, the prince of Greece, uh, were battling against Michael, the archangel, in the spiritual world to keep the, the answer to Daniel's prayer coming to him. I want you to understand there is a terrible, dangerous world that we live in, not physically, but spiritually. We fight against some dangerous spiritual battles. But we walk amongst it blind. Because we see what we see. We don't see the spiritual. I, I, I think back to uh, the, in, in the, the Old Testament, uh, uh, whether it was Elijah or Elisha, I can't remember the, the two names the, so, because they're so close. Uh, I get mixed up. But the, uh, the, the armies had come up to, to take Elijah, or the, the prophet. And, and uh, his, his uh, helper, his assistant was, was there, his servant. And he says, listen, Elijah, what are we going to do? They're all here to get me. And he says, Lord, open up his eyes. And he opened up his eyes. And where do you see the armies of God surrounding him? Listen, he had nothing to fear because the armies of God were there. God was there to protect him. And, and, and he saw that. And he knew that God wasn't going to allow anything to happen to him. Uh, in fact, uh, they, 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 uh, they went blind. They, they were able to go blind. And, and multiple armies came up against him. And every time it was, it was God's army that took care of him. And there's a spiritual battle that we can't see. But not only are there good, there is evil. And Satan is in control of this world. Satan is in control of this world. Look, look back at uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse... verse uh, Verse 12 again, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Uh, the word principalities is, is like uh, cities. Uh, Satan didn't come by himself. Uh, there are demons that he's in control of, uh, other fallen angels. Uh, uh, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. And we fight against this stuff day in and day out. And if we could see, uh, see the danger that we walk amongst every single day. You wonder why our society is the way it is? It's because the strong man is in his house. See, we, we've identified the, the strong man as, as, as Satan, and now we need to look at the description of the strong man. He's a strong man. Jesus said that the, the strong man, uh, if the strong man is in his house, he must first be bound. I want you to understand, it, uh, understand what I'm saying. He is not weak. Look all around us. Look at our culture. Over the last 20 years or 15 years, uh, look at the, the, the amount of school shootings. Uh, 20 years ago, you never would have thought that would happen. The first time it happened in Colum at Columbine High School, I can remember I was a teenager at the time, I thought, wow, how horrible is that? And it's happening all the time. Now, it's not like as bad as, as uh, the, news, the media wants to put it out there. They, they do that for ratings, but it's bad. And not just, not just school shootings, but, but the, the drugs and, and how it's taken a hold and a grip of, uh, of our nation. And it's, it's destroying our, the, the people and, and destroying lives. Listen, the, the homes. Listen, it, it used to be that 50% uh, that, 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 that of people that got married were, uh, would get divorced. It's still at that. But you know how many don't get married at all? The number of, of children that are born in fatherless homes or split homes is ridiculous. Our society is falling apart. Why? Because Satan is in the house. And he's a strong man. 
You knock on doors and, 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 and try to share the gospel. And then, hey, I'm all set. Uh, it happened yesterday. Hey, man, I'm all set. don't want that. You think you're all set. You are set. You're set in the wrong direction. I didn't say that because you've got to be careful in how you approach people. Because we're supposed to love, uh, approach them in love and kindness with the gospel. Amen. He didn't want to hear it. He was all set. Why? Because Satan has a hold of his heart. The Bible says you're a child of either God or you're a child of Satan. Before we can be a child of God, you were a child of Satan. If you're here saved today, God has adopted you as his son because of your salvation, because of the power uh, of the gospel. Uh, God made you his son. But those that are outside of that, the Bible says you're a, child of, you're a child of the devil. Why? Because you're born of the sin nature. And don't, don't think for a second that he doesn't have his grips on their lives. Kids bringing knives to school in, in, in first and second and third grade. To, to cut a teacher's throat. Eight-year-olds and ten-year-olds that are in prison for their entire life. They come tonight, Brother Bellamy uh, is, is, is coming to preach uh, and, and present the, the character under construction, the, this, uh, this, uh, this program that, where we can get into the schools and teach character to the kids. Well, you know why he did that? Why he, why he brought that uh, or put that, uh, that together? Because uh, as, a, as a Rock of Asian prison ministry, uh, he was going into these prisons where, where eight-year-olds and ten-year-olds were in prison and were never going to see the light of day again because of what they had already done by eight and 10 years old. Listen, Satan has his grips on our culture and our society. Satan has his grips on the entertainment industry. You can't watch a television without, without being, if you're, if you're holy and right with the Lord, without being offended in some way, whether, whether it's the commercials that come on between the shows or, or, or what the, the content of the show. Listen, uh, they, they start out with making things tolerable. They make a joke about it, right? They, they, they inject it in so that we allow it into our homes and, and we tolerate those things. And listen, those things that we as adults tolerate, our children will embrace is right. And we've seen it happen today. Why? How does this happen? Because Satan's a strong man. He's not this weakling that we think of. We take the verse that says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And we walk through our house and say, Satan, get out of my house. And you think that we're safe. There's a movie not too long ago, uh, The War Room, and it's a good movie, don't get me wrong. A woman walks through her, walks through her home and, and, and prays Satan out. Listen, we need to be very careful about what we do because Satan is a strong man. And he has a hold of our, of our nation. And he has a hold of our schools. And he has a hold of our homes. He has a hold of our marriages. He has a hold of our children. And he is not going to let go without a fight. Not only does he have a hold of all those things, on many Christians he has a hold of our minds. Say, so, hey, I'm free. The Bible says, the sun shall set me free, I shall be free indeed. It does, but he also says, do not give place to the devil. Many Christians have given place to the devil in their thoughts and the things that they bring into their lives. And you've allowed Satan to have what's called a stronghold in your life. You wonder why. Listen, the, the Southern Baptist Convention uh, put out a, 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 a uh, every year they do a, a big conference. And, and out of the churches that were there uh, in 2017, uh, they, uh, they, did a, uh, they, they supply hotel rooms and they get, they get all kinds of uh, feedback from all this stuff. Uh, the, the thing that terrifies me most, and we're talking that the, 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 the strongest men in the church go to these things. We're talking about the pastors and the leaders in the church go to these conferences. And listen, in 2017, they said that over 50% of the hotel rooms that were used by those pastors had accessed pornography while they were at the conference. It's not just guys. Today, today uh, uh, pornography, uh, listen, it's a, it has a grip upon our nation, a grip upon our people. It's got a, a grip upon our churches. Pastors falling everywhere. Why? Because they've allowed Satan to have a stronghold in their life. Well, can't they get victory? Sure they could. But Satan doesn't let go, let go of some things easily. It's a battle. 
whether it's pornography, whether it's, whether it's, a, uh, whether it's a, your pride or anger. Listen, it can be any number of things, any number of sins uh, that we allow and we, 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 we allow to fester and we, we allow to keep, carry with us. Uh, uh, Paul says to cast aside uh, those things which slow us down and, and the besetting sin. What's that besetting sin? That thing that we, that we carry with us in our life and we just kind of, uh, it's like our pet. Oh, cute and cuddly. Let me tell you, it's not a pet and it's not cute and cuddly. If you can see it for what it really is, it's got its fangs deep within you and you're not going to get it free of you without the power of God upon your life. Oh, it's just a habit. No, if we can see what the spiritual aspect of it, man, it's got us deep. This morning we talked about the holiness of God in Sunday school. If we saw the holiness of God, we would see ourselves as we really are. We'd stop kidding ourselves. We would stop pretending that everything is okay, that we're spiritual, righteous people, and see ourselves as we really are. Listen, I'm not trying to beat, a, beat up our church. I want you to understand we're, we're, we're fighting a battle, and sometimes we don't realize we're in the battle. We, we quote uh, passages like Ephesians chapter 6 and say, Oh, I'm going out for the fight, but we don't know about the fight that we're in. We need to protect ourselves. Jesus said, back there in Mark chapter 3, it says, no man can enter into the strong man's house. We've looked at the identity, uh, the identity of the strong man. We've looked at uh, uh, the, the description of the strong man. And now, and we've also looked at the house of the strong man because this is his house. I don't mean this church. I mean this world. But folks, I want you to understand, this is just a building. If something happens to our church, Satan could use this building. There are churches now that are being used for, for all kinds of things that they never should have been used for. But those were buildings. The church isn't the building. We're the church. And sad to say, there are many churches true churches that Satan has his grips on. See, Satan doesn't care if we come to church every Sunday. We care less. As long as we're cold and apathetic. As long as we're not seeking God. As long as we can fake it, he's happy. I appreciate Brother Ernie's testimony. He was not happy. He couldn't be here last week. Uh, Easter of all days, he had to, a uh, resurrection Sunday, he had to be in the hospital. He was not a happy camper. I, I thank God uh, Brother Troy went and, and uh, uh, the evening service uh, uh, took his, uh, uh, his, uh, his laptop and play, played the live service for Arnie. And, and Arnie was able to participate and see and hear, the, hear all the testimonies and the singing of, of, of what God had done and how God was working. Uh, he, was, he was tickled pink. Why? Because he got to be there. And this morning he, he, he comes up to me and says, he says, Pastor Rob, can I, can I give a testimony this morning? And I said, why? He says, and he says, because... Satan was really happy last week that I couldn't come to church, but he's mad this week. I said, absolutely, Arnie, you, you can give that testimony. Why? Because he's thanking God that he can be here. Thanking God that God can use him here. Thank, thank you, God. Listen, he's done nothing but fight to do more and more and more to serve here at the church. From, from uh, uh, passing out bulletins, and it started little. Would you think, it, would there be something little I could do, like passing out a, the, the, the bulletins or something? Sure, I know mean, you can do that. Do you think I could sing? That was a few weeks later. And do you think I could help Mr. Tro or Brother Troy to teach his class? I'm, I'm so excited about this. And, uh, listen, before long, he's going to have my job. <laughs> <laughs> Satan's not happy about it because he wants to be here. But if we come here because we have to be here, if we come here for any other reason than to worship God and to meet with God, Satan doesn't care. There are churches all across this country that are full to the brim, and they're, they're, they're standing, there's so many people in their churches that they have to have another building for them to sit in. Satan doesn't care as long as they're not there for the right reasons, and the word of God isn't being preached. And there are pl plenty of places like that. I'm not saying every church is like that, but, and I'm not saying every ch big church is like that, but I'm saying it's, it's all over the place. Why? Because we're, fight, we're fighting a battle. And Satan has his grips all over this place. And honestly, there are some people here today that Satan has his grips on. And we just don't know it. 
We're blind to it. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a strong man. He's, he's, he's a, he has his grips and his, his talons into us, so we, we can't remove him. And this is his house. And what Jesus said, is, no man can come into the strong man's house and spoil his goods unless first the strong man's bound. What do you think we do here every Sunday? Every time we, 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 we go knocking on doors on Saturday, uh, on Friday when we have club, what do you think we're trying to do? Spoil the strong man's house. See, we're trying to take what's his and take it for the Lord. Every time the gospel is presented, what are we trying to do? We're trying to snatch away one of his children. And listen, he's trying to, he wants to protect his children. Whether they're a child or an adult, they're still a child of Satan. And we're trying to pull that one from, de from death, trying to pull them from the brink of hell. Why? Because they belong to the wrong one. Every time I preach a message, what am I trying to do? Trying to spoil the strong man's house. Okay? We're trying to get into the school. We're trying to spoil the strong man's house. Say, it's a school. Listen, I'm not saying the teachers are evil. I'm not saying it, it, it's an evil place. What I'm saying is there is evil everywhere. And anything that we try to do for the Lord, we're spoiling the strong man's house. And we can try to do something in our own power. But what did Jesus say? No man can do it unless the strong man be bound. Without the authority, we can't go into the strong man's house and do anything. Without the authority of God behind us. Uh, I love the book of Acts. There's, there's a, a passage it's called about the sons of Siva. Siva was the high priest. Uh, Paul was, was, was there, he was preaching, and he was, he was performing miracles. Uh, uh, in fact, he was casting out, uh, I believe it's in, in Acts chapter 17, just for sake of time, we're not going to turn there. Uh, but uh, if you want to look it up, uh, look it up later. But, uh, so, so Paul had, had been doing some miracles there, and the, these, these men, the sons of Siva, were the, the high priest's sons, and they saw what Paul was doing, and they said, hey, listen, we want to do that. And so they went into the home of a man who was, who, was, who, had a, who was possessed by a devil, who was possessed by a demon. And again, you can say it doesn't happen all you want. I can tell you for sure that it does. Uh, even today, uh, there are demons out there that possess people. They walked into this man's house, and they said, uh, in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches, we demand that you leave this man. I'm, this is my version of it, but that's what they said. And I love the response. Jesus we know, and Paul we know, but we don't know who you are. And it says that he leapt upon them and beat them. And they ran naked and bloody because they didn't have the authority to tell him to get out. They did not have the authority to tell, to tell this demon uh, to, to, to leave. Listen, they were Jews. They were, they were good people. They were the sons of the high priest. Uh, they, they weren't wicked and evil, horrible people. But they didn't have the authority to go and tell, uh, tell this demon to get out of this man, to, 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 to cast him out. And they found out what happens real quick. Listen, what happens when we go and try to do something in our own power? We fail miserably. I don't care how many doors you knock telling people about Jesus Christ. If you go in your own power, <laughs> you might get yelled at. Well, even if you go in, in the Lord's power, you're going to get yelled at. But nothing will ever come of it. Why? Because you're going into the strong man's house. And first, you must be bound. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to get into the school. Listen, we're, we're having a little bit of difficulty uh, getting into the school. Uh, 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 not because anybody said, no, we don't want you here. Uh, just because it's, it, those things haven't come together. Do you know why they haven't come together? Because that's the strong man's house. At first, we must bind the strong man. Do you all remember, let's see if I wrote down the reference for it. I think it's a Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, yes. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. Uh, let's, we'll, we'll actually jump up a few. 
When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more unto him. And the spirit cried, ran and sore, and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? Now stop right there, don't read the next verse, we'll read it in a second. Uh, I want you to understand what happened here. Uh, the disciples, they'd been sent out. They got, Jesus had given the, the twelve disciples uh, the authority to go out and heal people, to preach the gospel, and to cast out devils. This has happened before that. They have gone out. They have, they have cast out devils. They have, they have preached the gospel. They have, they have healed people, and they've come back rejoicing in all that they were able to do uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. They were so excited about that. And this man uh, brings his, his child to, to the disciples, and he says, can you cast this demon out of my, my child? And, and they tried, and it didn't work. Now, they've been able to do it before. They just didn't understand why. So, they come, so the, the man then brings him to Jesus and says, Hey, your disciples weren't able to do this. Are you able to do this? And we just read that uh, he, he demanded the demon to, to go out of him. The, uh, the, 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 man, the young boy fell down as if he was dead. He told him to get up. And, and the disciples said, Jesus, why? Why couldn't we do it? We, we could do it before. Verse 29. And he said unto them, This kind come out forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. See, there, some of these battles are different levels of difficulty. Not every battle we face requires prayer and fasting. But every, every battle requires prayer. Listen, we, need to be, I, we, need, we should be prayer. Well, we don't fast. We're Baptists. We like to eat. I get it. I like to eat too. But fasting is a, is a neglecting of my body, seeking God to do something great. Because I can't bind the strong man. What does it take to bind the strong man? It takes Jesus Christ. I saw this, I saw, I saw this illustration of, of, a, of a young boy. We don't really have any uh, young boys in here, but, uh, uh, or I would do it. Uh, but uh, they had a big man come up and, and sit in a chair, and uh, they had a, the young boy come up, and the big man wrapped his arms around that child. Arms and legs. Have you ever done that with your kids? I love doing it with my kids. They like, they like to pretend like they can't get out. And then eventually they'll let me go. And I'll let them go. And then they come right back because they want me to do it again. Uh, that's because they enjoy it. But listen, when we're in the grips of the strong man, which we don't really enjoy it. We don't know that we don't anyways. Sin is pleasant for a season. But they can't get out on their own. Years ago, I, I, I took jujitsu and, and it was I had a, I had a great time and and we we decided I was living in Ohio. We decided to go up to Cleveland. There was a, a Gracie Academy. If you know the name, if you know jujitsu at all, or uh, you know the Gracie is 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 like they're the ones who invented Brazilian jujitsu. Uh, so uh, it, they, they went up to the Gracie Academy and I got to fight or wrestle. I say fight. It wasn't much of a fight. One of the the Gracie uh, one of the Gracies one of one of the family. <clears throat> It did not go well for me. He played with me. I mean, literally, I felt like a child uh, in the hands of, of an overgrown adult. Uh, he, he was spinning on top of me. He was doing all. I couldn't move because I was in the hands of somebody much greater than I was. I couldn't get free. Nothing I could do until he would decide to let me go. Satan will never decide to let anything that, he, that belongs to him go. Somebody bigger has to come along and let's set them free. That's why we go to Jesus. That's why we go to Jesus. Because we don't have the power. Listen, uh, the, I've, seen, I've seen marriages, praise God, that, were, that Satan had his grips upon and was ready to rip apart. And I've seen God, through prayer, put them back together. I've seen, I've seen lives that were so bound up in sin and despair and depression and anxiety that they, they just couldn't get free of the, the strong man that was holding them down. And listen, I've seen through prayer and through Christ that, that, that freedom given. It's only through Jesus Christ that we can have that freedom. But folks, we're in a battle today, and we need to understand we're in a battle. Listen, we need to understand that our prayer are, is the way in which we bind the strong man. 
Listen, our prayer shouldn't just be, Lord, I need this, Lord, I need this, Lord, I need this, Lord, I need this. It's not, it should not be so much about this physical realm. This physical realm, about, the Bible promises he'll provide those things that we need. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and, and, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. He's talking about your, your home, your clothing, your food, the, the things that are necessary. He provides those things. He's, he does say that we're to ask for our daily bread. But listen, more importantly, what is so much more important for our prayer life, it should be that we're seeking the, the strength of God, the might of God, the power of God, the boldness of God, that we can go out into this Satan's world and have God bind the strong man and see him do something. The only way that we as a church are going to do anything for the Lord is if he binds the strong man first. The only time we're going to see revival in our nation and we say, oh, that's, you know, that's probably never going to happen. You're right, because we don't want it to happen enough that we ask God to bind the strong man. And I don't mean once, once in a while. Revival doesn't come in a once a once in a month prayer or once in a six months prayer whenever we preach about a prayer. Listen, revival comes when, when we bow our knees and humbly ask God to give us revival and then we seek revival every single day because it's a burden upon our lives. Turn with me to the, the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. Now the book of Daniel chapter 10, the first few verses talks about Daniel having a vision and beginning to pray and ask God for the answer to, his, to that vision, what it was. Many times we stay away from the book of Daniel because prophecy is difficult to understand, but this we're not talking about the prophecy so much as, as how God gives him the answer. Verse 1 says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. That was, that was Daniel's uh, Babylonian name. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. What does it sound like he's doing? fasting. He's fasting and praying. And, and in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hittichel, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body was also like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned into me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees, and, was, and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken that, his, this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, the first day that he began to pray, that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. He's saying, I came to deliver this message to you. The, the, the day that you began to pray and fast is the day that this, this angel came to give him this word. Verse 13, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. One in twenty days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. You know what he's saying? He's not saying a, an earthly prince. He's not saying a king. Michael, the Michael referred to here, is not a, a prince. He's an archangel. He's, what, he's, what he's saying is that, that Satan opposed him and fought him, and for 21 days he needed the help of Michael the archangel. Understand there's hierarchies in the angels and demons. I'm not, we're not really going to get into this too much. I just want you to understand that there are, they are there. And he's saying that, that they opposed me, and that Michael had to come and help. Listen, there, that, the power is great against him, but why did it happen? 21 days he waited. There was a battle going on, and he didn't know it. 21 days he prayed and fasted and God gave him an answer. But he had to wait till the battle was over. 
This is not the only place where it talks about angels and demons fighting. In Jude chapter 1 verse 9, it says that Michael, uh, that Michael and Satan uh, fought over the body of Moses. Listen, I want you to understand, this spiritual battle isn't just something in my mind. It's not just something that we read about. It's something that is out there. We just can't see with our physical eyes. Satan is there, and he has his grips upon this world. He's got his grips upon our country. He's got his grips upon Augusta, the 18,000 and, and 100 and so many people that live here. He's got his grips on the majority of them. And the reason they're dying every day over opiate, it's not an opiate uh, uh, problem. It's a sin problem. It's a, it's a fact that we live in a world that's controlled by Satan, and these lives are controlled by Satan. And the fact that our, our marriages are falling apart, listen, that has, a, has to do with Satan being a hold of those lives. The reason our churches are failing and falling isn't because God isn't powerful. It's because we've allowed Satan to have a stronghold in our hearts and in our minds. Look with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 45. I say 45, but it's, there aren't 45 verses. Give me a second. The we, uh, verse 4. That's what, 4 and 5, not 45, sorry. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. What was Satan's sin? What got him cast out of heaven? He exalted himself against God. Everything in our mind that, that we say, listen, this isn't that bad. What does the word of God say? Because if we're holding true to it, what are we doing? We're saying that my mind, we're, we're, my thought, this sin, I'm exalting itself or I'm exalting it against the knowledge of God. We have the knowledge of God here. If we're not willing to be obedient to the word of God, what have we done? We've lifted something else up in our mind. We're to cast those things down. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't need a sword. We don't need a gun. Listen, uh, listen. I'm, a, I'm an American. I like my Second Amendment rights. But listen, if, they, if the law changes and they say, give me your guns, I won't be happy about it, but I'll give them my guns. You know why? Because the Bible says to follow the law of the land, right? That's what it says to do. That gun isn't going to save me. You know what will save me? It's my prayer. Do you see the, do you see the apostles fighting back physically? The church, the church was being persecuted. I mean, they, they were being torn apart. People were being ripped from their homes. It's not happening today. Let's not stock up our guns. Let's get on our knees. Let's get on our knees because that's the only way that we're going to change our country is getting on our knees and seeking an almighty God, an all-powerful God to do something here. You want, you want victory in your life? Get on your knees and ask God to give you the victory. And it may not come after one prayer, and it may not come after one week, but you keep praying until it comes. Because there's a spiritual battle going on. And Satan has a stronghold. And he's not just going to say, oops, okay, I, I give up. Yeah, I'm going to back away. He's got his grips in there. And he's going to stay in there until he's forced to let go. And you're not strong enough to make him let go. The only one strong enough is Jesus Christ. Our victory comes through Jesus Christ. We were talking about the First Corinthians 15. Uh, o death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And the la uh, last two verses in, in the chapter uh, that we covered uh, last week is, is our victory comes through Jesus Christ our Lord. It, it, that's where our victory comes from. If we're going to see victory here, it's going to come through Christ. It's going to come as we bow our knees before him and we seek him to bind the strong man. Is that what we want or are we happy where we're at? I mean, are we happy with, the, with our church as, as long as we, we have 40 people or so come in and we don't really do anything? For, are we happy nobody gets saved? Are we, are, are we happy if, if God doesn't do something? Are we going to get on our knees and seek revival from God? If we be honest with ourselves, what stronghold does God have in your life? What, is Satan? what stronghold does Satan have? Spirit of fear? Well, that's not fear. 
God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. If you have a spirit of fear within you, it doesn't come from God. Well, I, I trust God to, get, to take care of it. But I can't. That's not faith. Anytime you say but, you just erase everything you already said. I've got this, this habit I can't break. I've tried. I've, I've put it as, listen, uh, I'm, not, uh, <clears throat> we're not, I'm not talking about the, the sin that the world preaches about or people preach about. I'm talking about what the Word of God says. But if God's convicted you of something, and you said, I've tried, I can't get rid of it. Pray. Because you've given Satan a stronghold. What happened to the Israelites? God told them to go into the promised land to cast out all the, all the, 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 all the ites. I won't go through all their names. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Perizzites, and the, 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 whatever they are. There's a bunch of them. A bunch of ites. God says, cast them all out. But if you read through the book of Joshua and into the book of Judges, they cast out most of them, but they left some of them. Some of them they kept and they paid taxes. And God said, they will be a thorn in your side, a thorn in your flesh, and they will, you will never get rid of them. He said, I'm going to put them there to prove you, to test you, to try you. They got a promise to get rid of them. He said, you go push them out. But they didn't. Sometimes these things in our lives are there because we left them there. Because we allow them to be there. And in doing that, we've given Satan a stronghold. And if Satan has a stronghold, does, 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 now, I, don't misunderstand me. The Holy Spirit's in all those that are saved. But to, to walk in the Spirit, that means to be controlled by the Spirit, right? Not partially. Completely. Listen, if, if, I, if a cop pulls up to a guy, he's got a gun in, his, gun in his pants, and he says, put up your hands, and he puts up one hand, puts one hand on the butt of the gun, and says, I give up everything but this gun, has he given up at all? Lord, you can have every space in my mind, every, every part of my life, every part of my heart, all except for this one little section. I've carved it out here. Satan's going to dwell there. He's building up a stronghold. Uh, he, I mean, he's putting bars in the door. And he, he's putting all the locks on so you can't get in. Don't, don't bother that spot, Lord. You can control the rest of me. God says, I don't want to control any of you until I'm re ready to have all of you. And we can put on a front, and we can put, but we don't walk in the Spirit. That's why we fall. That's why we fail. Because the Bible says if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Will not. not might not. We have to walk in the Spirit. It means be filled with the Spirit. It means be submitted to the Spirit. Now listen, I, I, honestly, I think this is a plague upon the entire church across America. Not, not just our church, not just... I think it's a ch ch churches everywhere, Christians everywhere, fight this. That's why it's in the Bible. But that verse there in verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapon is prayer. Our weapon is the word of God. Ephesians chapter 6 gives us a whole list of things, and which, an armor which we're to gird ourselves about with every single day. But we need to go to the Lord and ask him to bind the strong man, to break down those walls in our lives. Listen, you've got somebody that you, that, you're, that you want to see get saved. They're not saved. The strong man has a hold of them. Do you know how you break that hold? You get on your knees and you pray. You want to see God do a work in his church? Listen, you, we're, 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 even though we're, in, even though we're, 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 we're Christians, uh, Satan still can come in and disrupt this church. There's a reason why a large portion of our church didn't show up this morning. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that people were trying to get away from God. Uh, people were in the hospital. Why? Because Satan didn't want them to be here. 
Absolutely, I believe that's complete proof that Satan did not want this message preached and did not want them to hear what was preached. I thank God that we're, that we're recording it and hopefully they'll all listen to it later or they're watching it from home uh, because, because they, they got back from the hospital. But listen, I want you to understand something. Satan doesn't want it. But we have the power through Christ to bind the strong man. And then back, go back, we're, we're finished. Go back to Mark chapter 3. Verse 27 again, it says, No man can enter into the strong man. We can't. The strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. See, the victory comes when the, when the strong man is bound. And it's only bound when we go to the Lord and ask him to bind him. The disciples couldn't do it. Even though they'd have the authority to do some things, they didn't have the authority here. And he says, no, for, for some, you need uh, prayer and fasting. Listen, until God gives us the authority to do anything, we need to be on our knees and asking God. I'm not saying go out and cast devils out of people. Do I believe there are devils in people? Yes. If they can, if they can control people in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Gospels during the life of Christ, they can do it now when he's not here. In fact, I, I'll be honest, I believe I've seen it. It's terrifying. I've never been so scared in my life. You can laugh if you want to. As a, as a, as a uh, 19, 20-year-old young man, uh, a basic EMT, I was asked to transport, help transport with another crew uh, because they couldn't contain him with the, three, the, the two they already had. They asked for another person to, to go along with them. I arrived at the hospital to find a man who was smaller than, uh, he was smaller than Cody. Now, Cody's not a small guy. He, he's, 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 he's fit, but he was, he was shorter uh, and, and about built the same. There were five police officers trying to hold him down. Cody, do you think you can take on five cops? That was after he'd been given enough, uh, enough drugs by the hospital to, to put a horse to sleep. And they said, we don't know why he's still awake. They put him in leather cuffs and strapped him to the bed, to our cot. As we were getting ready, he started laughing. And I, 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 it, was, it was the most surreal thing I ever saw. He bent over and he started to rip the leather cuffs. Uh, the, the leather things were holding, binding him to the, to the bed. I ripped him with his teeth, spitting out the chunks of leather. Have you ever tried to pull leather apart with your teeth? The cops were afraid of him, even though there were five of them there, and they were all armed. They had to handcuff one, one arm behind here, one arm over here. And for three hours, we drove him from, from there to Cleveland. I couldn't understand a word he was saying, but he was banging his head on the wall. Listen, let me tell you something. Satan is real. We walk around this world blind to what he really has his hands in, thinking, listen, I'll just do this and this for the Lord. Listen, don't, you don't do anything for the Lord. The Lord does it for us. Amen. We have to seek him to bind the strong man and allow him to work in the hearts and allow him to change our country. Allow him to come and, and bring revival to this body and to this country. Unless the strong man is bound, then we spoil his house. Then we spoil his house. Father God, I thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for this word, Lord, from you, Lord. I, Lord, I know that we live in a, a dangerous, terrifying place, Lord. As I think about it, it, it scares me just knowing the, the power that Satan has and the, that he, he brings over the lives of, uh, of all those that are around us. But Lord, I, I'm also uh, grateful for the power that is in Christ. Grateful for the power that is in prayer that we have, Lord, and all. Would we, would we as a church see the need for prayer, not just for, for the things that we want, the, those, those physical needs that we have, Lord, but that we would begin to seek you for help, for strength, for boldness, for, for, for you to bind the strong man, that we might see your work in a great and mighty way. God, I pray that you would work here this morning. I ask that your spirit would have freedom, Lord, that uh, Satan would be bound, and uh, Lord, that you could work amongst us. I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Keep your